All right. We are connecting. Cliff, what is up, brother? Hey, what's going on, man? Not a lot. I'm really stoked to have you on. Um, really quick, um, for everybody else jumping in, so everybody knows, um, we are on a episode of the Live Beyond Average podcast, episode 128. And uh, this is a little extension of our podcast um, called 10 Minute Tales. And it's an opportunity for our friends um, to jump on and use our platform to tell some of their stories, some of their fondest memories of uh, um, not only hunting tales, but how people are getting into hunting, anything hunting related. Um, and so I have my friend Cliff on today. He's from a little bit of ways from where I'm, <laughs> where I'm sitting right now. So Cliff, I'm going to let you kind of take over, jump in, tell us about yourself, and uh, feel free to eat up to 10 minutes, brother. <laughs> um, all right. My name is Cliff Cadet, y'all. Um, thank you, uh, Jordan, for having me. Um, I'm coming all the way from NYC. If you guys don't see in the name, Urban Archery NYC. Um, I'm actually working right now. I'm on my lunch break, but Jordan was kind enough to fit me in for today's 10-minute uh, tales. So, dude, um, I'm honored. I'm humbled to be on. Thank you for having me. Yes, of course, man. I'm so pumped. So pumped to have you on, dude. Especially all the way from New York. I followed your story from afar, all the way from South Dakota here. Um, and uh, fun watching you um, as an archer and uh, some of your story, man. So I'm, I'm pumped. How, how'd you get into it? Um, so back in 2017, um, I purchased a bow, uh, kind of an impulse buy, but fulfilling kind of a childhood fantasy. Um, but like, um, a lot of things, sometimes, you know, um, we tend to see shiny things, play with them for a little bit, then they end up, uh, on the side, they're collecting dust. So that's what happened to me. Then about, um, a year later, late 2018, picked my bow up, uh, committed to shooting regularly, you know, bought a new site, things like that. Um, you know, figured out what I liked, what I didn't like on my bow. Um, and then January, 2019 started this Instagram page. Um, you know, and originally I just wanted to shoot archery for fun, but as I was learning more and more about, um, archery, it kind of progressed into, um, an interest, um, in hunting. Okay. So, um, so it was learning, uh, the ins and outs of hunting in New York and it was, uh, found out it was going to be a little bit of a struggle, um, as hunting isn't, isn't permitted within the five boroughs of New York city. Um, so I was trying to figure out where I would, could potentially deer hunt um, last fall. Um, and I ended up, I have a buddy who has a piece of property two hours outside of New York City. So I hunted that. Um, successful in a lot of the knowledge that I gained, but unsuccessful in harvesting a deer. Okay. But um, but uh, fast forward to spring, um, I was able to get in touch with somebody who had access or was able to actually show me the public land that's actually way closer to my home, um, literally a little a little less than an hour from my home, and I got to hunt uh, turkey this past spring. Um, so, yeah, it, it was awesome. It was literally um, turkey season, spring turkey season in New York City, in New York State, kicked off May 1st, uh, okay. went all the way through May 31st, um, like a lot of states. Um, I went out on May 2nd, literally the, the second day of the season. Um, and I got I got to shout him out. Big, a huge thank you to Anthony Van Bach. He is actually an assistant director of a deer management program um, for a wildlife preserve called Anglefly. Okay. Um, so he's the, the guy that, that took me out. Um, since I'm, I'm really crap at calling, he did all the turkey <laughs> calling that day. <laughs> so he did the turkey calling that day. But um, we didn't we didn't hunt the preserve because um, unfortunately I don't have access to it just yet. That's where I'll be hunting this fall. I'll be deer hunting this fall. Okay. Uh, but uh, he took me to some public land surrounding that. Um, you know, got out got out to it at like zero dark thirty. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we set up shop, set up a stake blind, was posted up against a tree. Uh, watched the sun come up, hits the calls. For about like an hour or so, you know, he's hitting the call maybe every 15, 20 minutes, but getting no response. Okay. Now, Mark, now Mark, you had been a, a fairly windy morning. And um, so I was learning a lot, learning that uh, turkeys don't usually gobble on windy days because they really can't hear themselves, apparently. So um, after about an hour, hour and a half, we decided we made the, you know, it was a collective decision to pack it up. And um, just you know, walk the the land, see see if he could hit the call, and if we get any responses. Um, yeah. After about 
20, 30 minutes, came across another hunter. Um, and he kind of, you know, confirmed what we thought was that they just weren't gobbling. Either they just weren't gobbling, you know, responding to the calls, or there were none in the vicinity. Okay. So um, with Anthony's knowledge, we um, we hiked back towards um, towards our cars um, and hitting the call every, like, 15, 20 minutes. Um, now, one thing I should say about this piece of land is that it's open to the public for hiking. So um, there's a lot of hiking trails through it. So we're, we're following this one trail heading back to our cars. He's hitting the call. All of a sudden, we hear some monster gobbles. So we're excited. We're excited. Yep. Right? He hits the call again. We hear him. But then not even two minutes later, a hiker comes in from behind us. And she just, like, I mean, speed walking on past us, right? <laughs> Heads in the direction where we hear these turkles, turkeys gobbling. And within five, ten minutes, they stop. No response. Nothing. Yeah. So we, we were pretty sure that, uh, that this hiker spooked them. Um, so then, uh, let's see, we ended up heading back to the cars, hit a second piece of property, Right. Um, hit the gobble, hit the turkey call. I'm sorry for about, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Hour passes, nothing. So we hit a third piece of property. Spent about 45 to, minutes to an hour there. No response. Finally, we hit this fourth piece of property and we agree, you know, whether we hear anything or not, we're going to we're going to hike these hills and, um, and just set up the stake blinds again, set up the decoys again and um, and just post up there. So after climbing this hill that seemed to have gone on forever, um, we're huffing and puffing. We get to the top of this hill. Um, we're walking along uh, this kind of stone wall, right? Um, and he hits the call. And all of a sudden, I mean, it was so loud. Like, we knew they were close. We didn't even have enough time to drop our gear. We literally dropped, the gr dropped to the ground like it was nobody's business. And... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hit the ground hard, and um, because it the gobbles were so loud, they had to have been just just down the hill from us. Like we might not have seen them, um, as we were walking up the hill. Yeah. So now, I'm sitting on on my butt with my legs kicked out in front of me. Um, I've got the, a tree to my back, uh, stone wall maybe about two to three feet high to my left. Anthony's less than six feet ahead of me. He's got the stone wall to his left and and a tree in front of him. So he's got great cover, but me, the way I'm sitting, the way you're looking at me, like I'm like this, trying to get behind the, the <laughs> stone wall. Yeah. And I've got and I've got my bow. You know, I I after hearing the gobbles, I knocked an arrow, and I've got my bow sitting in between my legs. I didn't think about how am I gonna shoot this the way that I'm sitting. Right. So, so Anthony's got a uh, great visibility, a great line of sight because these stone walls, he there's holes in them, so he can just peek through the holes and see what's going on. Okay. So he hits the call, and maybe not even two minutes later, this hen hops over this other wall on the other side of the wall that we're leaning up against. And this hen hops over this opening that she's at, pops across, and then just goes to the left and walks along the wall, disappears within five minutes. He hits the call again. Here the response gobbles like crazy, loud, loud, and I'm pumped, bro. I'm I'm like, all right, they're right here, they're right here. I don't know where, but they're right here, right? Same place that this hen hopped over. These three jakes. It it it, it ended up being uh, two jakes and a tom, but at the time they hopped over the wall, I really couldn't tell. I just knew they were males. I could see a beard on all three of them. Okay. All right. So um, they hop over the wall and um, they stop at maybe anywhere from like 30 to 40 yards away from us. Um, again, on the other side of this wall. And um, they're just like, they're just scanning the area because they hear a hen, but they're just like, where is she? You know what I'm right. saying? So um, it, was, it was really cool to just after, you know, having studied this, learning from everybody through social media, how, how the, these Jakes and these Toms react to, to hen calls and stuff like that. It was just really cool to see it in action. So um, Anthony hits the call again, but uh, light, nothing crazy. And um, they're still looking. They come in within about a little under 30 yards. I, I, I'm spitballing at about 25 yards. They get in closer and they're looking. They're looking. Um, two, two of them happen to just disregard us and just start pecking at whatever's on the ground. But this one Jake, he's still just like, all right, where is she? He's got his head up and he's looking. 
He's looking. <laughs> he knows. All right? Yeah, he knows something's up. So now he happens to drop his head and turn, you know, broadside. And at that same time, Anthony, like, I'm, I know I can hit a 40-yard shot, right? But with Anthony so close, like I said, less than six feet in front of me, I'm not going to take a shot from behind a guy without him knowing that I'm about to let this arrow fly. Right. So they happen to be closer, like I said, 25 to 30 yards. Um, he turns around and he signals to me like this. So I took it as he's asking me, can I make the shot over the wall? Now, I don't know sign language besides yes and stuff like that. So I ducked and I whispered to him and I'm like, if you drop to the ground, I can make the shot. Okay. He, tur- he turns forward and I just see him drop down to the ground, right? And I'm like, yes. Yeah, I, but- <laughs> I, dr- I draw back, right? I got to add, I've got a one pin sight, right? So I draw back, pop up, and I make a straight line from the top of the wall. I draw a line, trace a line along the ground to basically the vitals on this turkey. And I didn't let the pin settle. I literally just, once I saw that green dot center mass on that bird, I pulled the trigger. And boom, I saw the arrow fly, and I just saw a puff of feathers. And oh, yes. Now, now, in the excitement of it all, he and I, because he saw it. He saw everything because he's peeking through this wall. We're both jumping up and screaming. We scared the crap out of the other two birds, right? So the other two birds go running off, and he's like, holy crap. So in the excitement, he decides to knock in another arrow. And my bird that I shot flopped a little bit. And something I learned at that moment, I didn't know that when two male or any male turkeys, I guess, sense uh, a weakness in another bird or see that they're hurt, injured or anything, that they, I guess, attack. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know this until then because we quieted down and these two birds double back to start try stomping or peck at, the, at this one bird I took down. So we hopped over this wall. Um, Anthony's got this arrow knocked and he was ready to shoot one himself to, you know, but they got scared. They ran off and boom, I've got my bird. And when I tell you, I was more excited because I practice a lot. You know, anyone on social media tell you that I'm constantly practicing in in my mother-in-law's driveway, shooting, shooting, shooting. And it all amounted to this one shot that I had to take sitting on my butt, legs kicked out in front of me and that's it and just did it you know what i'm saying so i was more excited over the fact that i took the shot from a seated position legs kicked out in front of me with a guy in front of me so over a guy in front of me and over like a a rock wall and i hit him dead on didn't touch the meat all vitals all vitals crushed him yeah so that that's i called my wife like you should have seen this shot so she was like so you got a turkey i was like yes but you should have seen this shot (laughs) you know what i'm saying and then uh you know what I'm saying? Then took the turkeys are a lot heavier than I expected. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm used to the traditional Thanksgiving turkey you buy frozen at your local supermarket. You know what I'm right. saying? But this bird was a lot heavier, so we lugged them back down to to our cars. And you know what? Based off of two things: one, the fact that I'm the one who carves the uh, Thanksgiving Day turkey, uh, okay. you know, every year, and whatever I could find on YouTube on how to, um, you yeah. know, basically to butcher a turkey. On the side of the road, on Anthony's uh, tailgate, butchered my turkey, got the turkey, both the left side, right side, got the turkey breast out, took out the turkey legs, turkey thighs, and it was turkey meat in the freezer. Dude, so. such a cool story, man. <laughs> I appreciate you so much jumping on, taking your lunch break to tell the story. Nah, and it's thank awesome. you for having me. Love, love the passion behind it. I mean, that's what this is all about, dude. It's like sharing this passion that – we have and like how whether you're new whether you're a vet like whatever there's such an intertwined passion of like that just needs to be shared you know and it's so rad um and dude this is a formal invitation right here if you want to come out and do some spot and stock muley hunting with me in south dakota formal invitation you have a place to stay it's awesome and it's not very expensive like I told you in the DMs, I've been to South Dakota before. Um, yeah, um, I was blessed back in 2003 to chaperone um, 10 t- high school teens, high school seniors, to um, to stay. We spent about three weeks. First, we sp- stayed at the Audubon House in um, in Minnesota. Yep. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you're familiar with it. And uh, they stayed there for a week-long National Youth Leadership Conference. 
And then we spent two weeks traveling. Uh, we went out to Pine Ridge, um, Rosebud. Rosebud, did I say that right? Yeah, Rosebud. Yep. Um, uh, and uh, where else? Went Checked out the Black Hills. We were out in the Black Hills. Went to Mount Rushmore. Went to the um, the Crazy Horse Memorial. Um, yep. It was so cool. So cool. So totally yeah. great experience. So Dude, my, so my mom's from Rosebud. So you, you're right, right there. And where I grew up, just north of there. You actually probably drove through my hometown mm -hmm. to get to where, where you were down there. Um, and so, dude, you'd be you'd be kind of familiar if we went out hunting. You'd be like, oh yeah, I've been been by this spot. I've been over yeah. here. So, uh, if you ever want to, you're welcome to come out, and uh, we'll spend some days chasing some mules, man. Appreciate that. Thank you, brother. Of course, of course. Hey, keep it up, and please uh, tell everybody really quick. Uh, where they can find you on Instagram and where and, and uh, your podcast as well that you've been doing. All right, um, pretty much on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. YouTube content is kind of lagging, so I apologize for that. But it's Urban Archery NYC. Um, you okay. can find me on all those platforms, and um, my podcast is When the Hunt Calls, um, and it essentially targets you know new hunters like myself. Um, and I try to bring on guests, people that I want to learn from. So a lot of the questions are just questions. I'm not afraid to ask. Um, you know what they say, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. Um, yeah. So, And then I just hope people tune in, listen, and um, what do you call it? And enjoy themselves and learn something as well. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for jumping on. Um, this is our, our technically first time talking face-to-face. -face <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Awesome. I hope it's the uh, beginning of a new friendship as well. And uh, Thank you so much. Stay safe. And uh, have you a good rest of your week, brother. We'll see you later. <laughs> you too, brother. Bye.